Well, as uh, Dan mentioned, uh, this, is, uh, this is a bit of a, a last opportunity I'll have to speak, at least to the college. Uh, seminary continues, high school continues. But uh, for, uh, uh, for many of you, this will be my last opportunity to interact a bit with you and to speak with you. And, uh, and, and in order to do that, I, I was reflecting on sort of biblical farewells. I mean, that's a strong word, but biblical transitions. And, and so this is a bit of a transition. And I know there's two more weeks of, of school and exams and, and, and there's lots still to be done. But, but as we think of the transition we're entering, I wanted to read some passages that I want you to listen to very carefully to. And I want you to listen for common themes in these. And know this, that a lot of enterprises, a lot of organizations... A lot of people struggle in transitions. There's something very stabilizing about routines. But sometimes when we enter into uh, transitions, we, we stumble a bit because we, we lose our equilib- equilibrium and, and there's a little bit of uh, a change going on and, and sometimes it, it's an opportunity for some significant steps in progress and sometimes it, it causes us a little bit of stumbling. So I want to read to you some passages this morning about transitions. And the first one is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Moses is 120 years old, and I want you to listen to the kinds of things. I know this is a particular historic context, and I know this is to Israel, but I want you to listen to the the kinds of things he's saying. Not just the specifics, listen to the specifics, but listen to the, the spirit. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it too far off. It's not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend to heaven for us? And bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over to the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. This is achievable. This is doable. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your hearts turn away, you'll not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live, in, live long in the land that you're going over to the Jordan to enter in and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life. Choose life that you may live and your offspring may live. Loving the Lord, your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and the length of days that you dwell in the land the Lord your God swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. And then into chapter 31, a couple of verses later, he says, be strong and courageous, do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you, he will not leave you, nor forsake you. Now, when you look at Joshua's farewell, Joshua's transition, if you will, he says some very similar things. Listen to this from from Joshua chapter 23, verse 2. Joshua summoned all Israel, its elders and heads, its judges and officials, and said to them, I'm now old and well advanced in years. You've seen all that the Lord your God has done for these nations for your sake, for it is the Lord your God who has fought for you. Behold, I've, I've allotted to you as an inheritance for your tribes, those nations that remain, along with all the nations that I've already cut off from the Jordan to the great sea of the west. The Lord your God will push them back before you and drive them out of your sight. And you shall possess their land just as the Lord your God promised you. Therefore, be very strong to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, turning aside from from it neither to the right hand nor to the left, that you may not mix with these nations remaining among you or make mention of the names of their gods or swear by them or serve them or bow down to them, but you shall cling 
to the Lord your God just as you have done to this day. For the Lord has driven out before you, the, you great nations, strong nations, and as for you, no man has been able to stand before you to this day. One man of you puts to flight a thousand since the Lord your God who fights for you just as he promised you. Be very careful, therefore, to love the Lord your God. Can I remind you of Jesus' words in Matthew 28, where he says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Last words, lasting words, transitional words as the disciples were entering a new phase. Paul, to his friend and protege, Timothy, he says to him in 2 Timothy, his last epistle, chapter four, he says, I charge you in the presence of God and, and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachings to suit their own passions. Whoa, what a descriptor. And will turn away from listening to the truth and wandering off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure has come. I fought the good fight. and I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but all, also to all who have loved his appearing. And even Peter, in his lasting words, his last words to the saints, he writes in 2 Peter chapter 3, he says, verse 14, Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these things, and he's referring to the signs of his return, he says, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. If you've been listening very carefully, or if you were to line all these passages up, and look for common themes, you'd certainly see a number of them. Now, not everyone has all of the same themes, but they all are linked together by some common elements. And certainly, the dominant message of all of these is this, keep God first. Keep God in his first place. This is the message for all of us as we enter into transitions, whether you are going home for the summer and coming back, whether you are graduating, whether you are moving into marketplace or ministry settings, this is a transition. And the message for all of us, staff, faculty, students alike, is always to keep God first because God has competition. He does. And many of you will know that Prior to the 20th century, the word priority never was spoken of in the plural. It was never written in the plural. There was one priority. A priority was one. And our priority is always God. And so Moses, to the people of Israel, as they're entering the land, and Joshua, as they're now in the land, and of course Jesus, and of course Paul and Peter, Keep God as first. Keep him in that number one position to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. Keep our focus, our energy, our time, our passions, our devotion, our obedience on God because idols will come and they clothe themselves in all kinds of apparel and sometimes very attractive, morally neutral kinds of apparel. Relationships. Ambition. Elixirs, various kinds of medications and self-medications. Forgive me for sounding a little bit like your dad this morning, but when we're younger, there's less complexity 
and thus there's less competition. But when we start to enter marketplace or ministry, we start to enter our careers, we start being ignited even more by ambition. And we start making money. And many of us will marry and have children. And we'll sell our souls to the bank and we'll buy a townhouse. And we'll get life insurance. And, we'll, and, 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 and life gets complex with very good things. But they begin to compete and crowd out our priority. Keep God first and resist the temptation to have other things compete and crowd God out. It's always a challenge. And with time and with maturity, there's only more complexity. It, it doesn't get easier, it gets harder. I, I, I want to believe that as I mature my relation with Jesus Christ, I'm being conformed to the image of his son. And yet paralleling those, those aspirations and those realities I hope are being at work in my life through the Holy Spirit, there's almost an increasing glaringness to the capacity I have for sin. Because you see, temptation is always before us. Competition is always before us. And we can even clothe that in all kinds of spiritual language. So we can talk about spiritual ambition for the kingdom. And it's all about personal ambition because it gives us a buzz. And we can talk about institutional morale. And really it's about pride. And we can talk about hard work. Hard work's a good thing, but it can become a form of legalism or it can become a, an addiction of sorts where, where you feel more important because of what you do. And all of these things which can have all kinds of potential for good and for godliness can also become vices and idols in our lives. Keep God first. Keep God first. Moses says. Joshua says. Jesus says. Paul says. and Peter says. Another theme that I think is a common reoccurring theme is stay the course. Moses, as you enter the land, stay the course. Joshua, we're now here, but the job's not done. We've got more work to do. Jesus, I've been pouring my life into you. You're beginning to, to reproduce, but, but you need to continue to make disciples, not just in this area, but of all nations. Paul to Timothy. The things I've done for you, you do for others, which will in turn multiply other generations. Peter, stay the course. Stay the course because discouragement can descend on all of us and we can get sidetracked. Pressure. And we lose heart. And we want to give up. Maybe of our faith or maybe just of the devoted part of it and we keep it as sort of a, a sidebar. Stay the course. Stay the course certainly in your relationship with God and your commitment to ministry, but stay the course even in projects that you begin to embrace. Let me make an observation. Much of our early days of education are in small packages. And so when you think of high school, four years, some of you longer. When you think of college, three, five years, some of you, but these packages. So we get into our first job, and after three, four years, we start getting bored. Or maybe even disillusioned. And we start to get itchy, and we want to change. Now, your first role likely won't be your permanent role, but let me tell you an axiom of life. The longer we stay at anything, the higher the probability of exponential results. The longer we work at anything, we begin to see that upward curve more dramatically unfold. And most of us quit too soon. Now, I know there's toxic environments and there's settings and situations where you're gonna outgrow. That's fine, I, th this is not a blank, but for the most part, we quit too soon. Stay the course. Stay the course in the development of your gifts and abilities. Stay the course in keeping yourself sharp and sharpening the saw. Stay the course in your relationship with God. Stay the course of serving the mission and purposes of the kingdom of God 
in our times and in our world. And the more we put into it, with greater longevity, the greater results we see. Those of you who are going to ministry, you're going to see that real ministry leverage doesn't begin until year six or even year seven. Stay the course. A, a third element that I think we see in all of these is this spirit of, well, don't let fear paralyze you. And so Moses to the people, be strong and courageous. Joshua, be strong and courageous. Jesus, I'll never leave you. You're never going to be alone. Be strong and courageous because, because fear has the capacity to either partially or completely paralyze us and debilitate us. So we become immobilized. Listen, we have fear. We all have fear. Some of us are afraid to open up in relationships and friendships and we'll get just so far and then we self-destruct. Some of us are so afraid of failure that we never risk anything. And, and we might be A students, but we're A students because we know we can get an A, but we won't do anything different or new because we might not succeed, we might fail, and we might not get the results, we, and we're afraid, and we're paralyzed by fear. And some of us are so afraid of rejection, and so in every relationship, in every setting, we say the things that we know will be met with affirmation and, and, and encouragement and acceptance, and we're so afraid to be rejected that we compromise. And fear, it, it, it holds us back and debilitates us. And, and God says, I'm with you. You're never alone. I'm holding your hand. I'm with you always. But you have fear. I have fear. And so when I go to Regina to meet with government leaders, I'm nervous. And when I meet with with leaders of other public institutions. You know, I want to sound like, yeah, I'm a player. I'm afraid. And we look at the message of our culture. It is not a message that's welcome in large measure. And fear, fear can threaten all of us. And so whether it's in relationships, even with your own spouse, whether it's colleagues, Next week, our board is going to be on campus. They're my boss. Would you be really nice to them? Be good for me. But they're going to be here and welcome to the table when you see them in the dining hall. But, you know, there's, there's well, I've got to, fear will, will hold us back. And Moses to the people of Israel, and Joshua to the people of Israel, and Jesus to you and I, he says, you're, you're not alone. You don't have to be afraid. You can press forward because it's, it's all in my hands anyway. Really, what, what, what do we have to fear? Death? Nope. We don't have to fear anything. And so these common elements are for all of us. Graduates, returning students, staff, faculty. This is a message for all of us. But can I shift gears here for a moment? for a few moments and and talk to some of us. That's for all of us. Keep God first. Stay the course. Don't be paralyzed by fear because we all need tenacity and we all need to be reminded to keep God as our first priority. We all need to be reminded that fear is so debilitating. That's for all of us, but can I speak to some of us for a few moments? This isn't from the text. This is just uh, my opportunity to say a few words. Some of us here We need to rest. Push hard for two more weeks. Some of you are just exhausted. And you're not in a position to make critical decisions when you're exhausted. Staff and faculty, you need a break. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Rest is a good thing. It's a biblical thing. My wife and I are looking forward to a break in May. We need rest. Some of, some of you really need a rest. Take it. How do you charge a battery? Well, you can boost it or you can trickle charge. 
and you get fast results from a boost, but you do that enough times, you burn out the plates, trickle charge. Some of us here, you need a trickle charge. You need that rest. Some of us, some of us we need to resolve. And before we leave, we need to have some hard conversations. And so when I read Matthew 5 and I read Matthew 18, whether I'm the bully or the bullied, whether I'm the offender or I'm the offended, if there's something wrong in a relationship, I have a responsibility to before God as a follower of Jesus Christ to do whatever I can do to fix it. And some of you have some relationships or some conversations that you really need to have before you leave because if you leave with it, you're going to carry a bit of bitterness with it. And bitterness... You've heard it before. It will destroy you. It can just, feuds begin with people and families and people groups and tribes and cultures and nations and they can go on for centuries. So you need to have some conversations before you leave. On our mission, vision, values brochure, I know you have this all memorized. Our promise to you to cultivate a learning community experience where each of us is captivated by Christ's kingdom call, inspired by God's transforming word. That's our commitment to you. But we sometimes stumble. And sometimes we, we don't fulfill the commitments that we want to fulfill. And there are times I have to say sorry to my wife. And there are times I have to say sorry to colleagues. And there are times... We have to say sorry to each other. And if a handful of you need to have a conversation before you leave, have it. So we can learn from it and grow from it and be united, reconciled. This is on all of us. And so I was at an event very recently. I had an interchange with a person and I could just sense, hmm, I have to follow up on that because I'm missing something here. So some of us, we need a rest. Some of us need to have some hard conversations before we leave to make things right. Some of us need to say thank you. And we all need to have a a spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving. But for some of us here, there have been people, friends, roommates, colleagues, a faculty member, it's just poured themselves into you, that you need to go to them and you need, you need to, in a very meaningful way, say thank you. Because they've marked your life. And so some of us here have to, have to go and, in that very special way, communicate our appreciation and our gratitude and our thankfulness for what that person has done for us and to us and in our life and in our relationship with God. And then finally, some of us, some of us need to come back because God isn't yet finished with you in this environment. Now, if you're a graduate, you're saying, nope, I'm gone. <laughs> but, but some of you are thinking, well, yeah, I'm going, on, I'm going here, and I'm going, you know what, I, uh, let, there's all kinds of good schools. I'm here because this is a good school. And we'll stumble, we'll bump into each other, but, but for some of you, there are learnings that you still need to embrace. And right now, end of March, you've got other plans, but maybe, maybe some of you need to come back. Education, and I'm going to sound like a dad again, but education is never a waste. And the principles that's constant to your life from the word of God will shape and transform your thinking, your behavior, the quality of your decisions for the rest of your life. Some of you, some of you need to come back. And maybe you've got to have a rest before you make that decision. Maybe you've got to have a hard conversation before you make that decision. Maybe you need to say a thank you before you make that decision. But some of you, some of you may need to return and come back. And so for all of us today, 
regardless of what position we hold here, we all need to remind ourselves that God has competition. And we have to make a calculated choice to keep God first. And for all of us, discouragement can descend and the pressures that we will face sometimes will be absolutely unimaginable. God says, stay the course. And as for fear, it has a power to debilitate and to paralyze. And we need to remind ourselves afresh that we are not now nor will we ever be alone. That's for all of us. May those truths grip our hearts and affect our behavior, we pray.